Here's the problem with low fat diets, cutting calories, juice cleanses, and really other diets that just puts you on these massive calorie deficits. For all intents and purposes, those can all be classified as crash diets. And they all lead to one undesirable effect. They make you hungry. And the next person I meet who likes the feeling of hunger would be the first. Why? Because being hungry sucks. Here is a very important concept that I need you to understand. And if you can come from this perspective moving forward, you will get results. Weight loss in its very essence is not about counting calories. It's about controlling hunger. Rewind this video if you have to. Write that statement down. Print it. Put it on your fridge. Frame it. Set it as your screensaver. Do whatever you have to because if you can wrap your head around that concept, and embrace it. You will finally have the magical key to unlocking weight loss. But that's what makes losing weight so hard for so many people. They're led to go on these crash diets. They're led to eat a lot of these highly processed foods that are not satiating at all. And they're never fully satisfied after their meals. They're never full, which then causes more cravings. And now their bodies are in a semi-starved state. And that's where the problem starts. Because now they're up against these really strong cravings and hunger until their next not so satiating meal. They're going against their hunger hormones. They're going against physiology. And guess what? Your body is an adaptation machine and your body's physiology will always win. It's undefeated. Before we dive in deeper, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video every week. Okay, real talk. When you're trying to lose weight, some hunger is to be expected. It's perfectly normal. That is your body trying to stay in homeostasis. The best thing we can do again is to control hunger because the human body has natural built-in fat burning mechanisms that will allow you to tap into your almost unlimited fat stores and burn it for energy, which will then result in you not feeling hungry because you always have energy to burn. You just really need to learn how to tap into it. Here are seven ways how. Number one, practice intermittent fasting. If you're new to my channel, intermittent fasting is something that I talk extensively a lot about because if the benefits of intermittent fasting could be put in a pill, it would be the greatest blockbuster medication of all time right next to exercise. It's something that I'm currently practicing right now. I'm in a fasted state. I do it every day. In fact, I've been doing it for the last eight years and this is the physique that I'm able to maintain. But one of the best benefits of intermittent fasting that I want to focus on for this video is that it improves your insulin sensitivity. Why is that important? Well, insulin is what controls your body weight. Some experts consider it to be the master hormone. If you want any chance of achieving a successful weight loss transformation and maintaining it, you are going to do your very best to moderate your insulin levels at all times. And you do that by manipulating your diet and meal frequency. But what happens when you eat a lot of refined carbs and sugar and you're someone who snacks all day? Basically, if you follow the standard dietary advice here in North America, you develop something called insulin resistance. And that is not a good thing. And really the most telling stat is 88% of American adults suffer from some form of metabolic dysfunction or insulin resistance. Three out of four American adults is also in the overweight or obese category. This is a serious problem. And that's probably intermittent fasting's biggest flaw is that there's nothing sexy about it. You can't sell it. But when it comes to controlling hunger, it might be one of your most powerful tools. Here's why. Let's go back to insulin. I talk a lot about the science behind this in this video, but all you really need to know is that high insulin blocks fat burning. Again, that's from eating a lot of refined carbs and sugar and grazing on food all day. If you never wanna lose weight, just keep doing that. However, if you decide to take a break from eating and just drink water, black coffee, and tea, your insulin gets a chance to go back down to baseline. And when that happens, your fat stores gets released. And now it can be used for energy and you have at least 100,000 calories worth of stored energy in the form of body fat waiting to be used. It is not just there for looks. And I experienced this firsthand when I did a seven day water fast last year and I just stopped feeling hungry. This awesome fat burning mechanism, by the way, is called metabolic flexibility. Now, I'm not asking you to do a seven day water fast to achieve metabolic flexibility. Although there are experts out there who suggest that a yearly seven day water fast is extremely powerful when it comes to preventing cancer because of something called autophagy that only gets triggered when you fast. Anyway, 
Even if you just do a daily 16 hour fast, you're still gonna get a lot of these benefits. So just skip breakfast. Just think of your body eating your fat stores for energy for breakfast. And fasting is like a muscle. So I have to admit, there is an adaptation period of about two weeks here where you might feel a little crummy at first. You might even feel hungry and that's perfectly normal. But the more you do it, the better you get at it and the more metabolically flexible you become. Nowadays, I'm so used to it that I honestly just eat one giant meal every day. This is also called the OMAD diet and I love it. Even now that I'm just at maintenance mode, I still do intermittent fasting. It's honestly just so convenient. The mental clarity and concentration that it gives me is really amazing stuff and I don't have to think about food all day. I'm super productive because of it. It has literally changed my life and the life of all my students. Tip number two, and I kind of brushed up on this already, but let's dive into it a little bit deeper because it can be used as an unbelievably powerful tool when it comes to controlling hunger. Drink black coffee, tea, water, soda water, or bulletproof coffee. All the things I just mentioned are great appetite suppressants, especially coffee and tea. Plus, they're delicious. Going back to intermittent fasting, that's what I drink all day when I'm in a fasted state and I rarely ever feel hunger. Even if I do, it only lasts a few minutes and then it just goes away. However, if you're completely new to the world of fasting, a great alternative for you, and this is actually something that I'm currently experimenting with right now, is to drink bulletproof coffee. I recently got exposed to Dave Asprey's books and he's the inventor of the bulletproof coffee. He's also into biohacking and I'm now into it as well. And I now aim to be a super centenarian just like him. So instead of just drinking black coffee when you're doing intermittent fasting, going bulletproof is where you add MCT oil and grass-fed butter to your coffee and it turns it into the most delicious, guilt-free, creamy, frothy cup of coffee that you'll ever have. I honestly can't get over how delicious it is. From a purist standpoint, drinking bulletproof coffee technically breaks your fast, but you still get most of the benefits of intermittent fasting, so you're still okay. The only difference is you're actually ingesting some fat calories from the MCT oil and grass-fed butter, and you are 100% not gonna be hungry when you drink a cup of bulletproof coffee because fat is extremely satiating and it activates cholecystokinin or CCK, which is one of your satiety hormones. When you do this, you're gonna have bulletproof coffee as your breakfast. This is called bulletproof intermittent fasting, by the way, and then you're just going to have lunch and dinner. So you're going to have two meals, preferably in a six hour eating window. If you do this and you follow the rest of the tips I'm about to give you, I am willing to bet a lot of money that you're going to get results. MCT, by the way, stands for medium chain triglycerides. When you ingest this stuff through bulletproof coffee, your body turns it into ketones and it becomes usable energy for your body right away. Trust me, it's good for you. Number three, eat high volume, nutrient-dense, low-carb vegetables. Remember, I only want you to eat two meals here. And your best option on what goes on most of your plate are leafy greens and cruciferous vegetables because they're extremely nutrient-dense. They are jam-packed with micronutrients. They're extremely low in calories, but who's counting? They're extremely low in carbs, but most importantly, they contain fiber, which is gonna activate that stretch mechanism in your stomach, which will then actively turn off hunger. So you get the best of both worlds here. You get the volume while being low in calories and you're also turning off hunger. And I made a video recently on what I eat in a day and I showed you guys how much vegetables I eat in one sitting and it's a lot. So make sure you check it out. You should also check out this video if you want a more detailed list on other nutrient dense staple foods that you should be eating. Number four, fill the rest of your plate with fat and protein. Again, going back to controlling hunger, what is satiating? Well, the most satiating foods on the planet are fat and protein from animal products. Think about a piece of steak, for example, or bacon and eggs and avocado, nuts and cheese, butter and dark chocolate. In terms of physiology, fat and protein also activate your satiety hormones. Peptide YY for protein, and again, CCK from fat, which then actively turns off hunger. Problem solved. This is why just strictly cutting calories and trying to fit as much highly processed franken foods that are low in calories in your calorie counting app does not work long term because they're not satiating at all. There's nothing satiating about rice crackers, granola bars, or those 100 calorie packs of Oreo thins. You're usually hungry like an hour later after eating them. And all those foods I just mentioned are made out of refined carbs and sugar, which makes them extremely 
fattening. Same thing with drinking diet soda or anything that's zero calories that's just artificially sweetened. You're usually hungrier afterwards when you drink that stuff. It doesn't matter that it says zero calories. That literally means nothing. And really the only question you should be asking whenever you eat is, does this turn off hunger. By the way, I'm not saying that you should never eat carbs. I think there's a time and place to properly incorporate them into your diet. And the best time really is after a hard workout because exercise improves insulin sensitivity. And if you eat high quality carbs like sweet potatoes, for example, it's going to be used to refuel your muscle glycogen stores. That's why your workouts need to be hard. It needs to be done at a high intensity to empty out your muscle glycogen stores in the first place. Now, tip number five is going to sound super obvious unless you're like me and you constantly have to remind yourself to do it. And that is drink enough water and buy enough water. I don't mean that you should be carrying around those obnoxious gallons of water unless you really like it for some reason, then go ahead, live your best life. But what I mean by drinking enough water is don't just drink a glass of water first thing in the morning, then completely forget about it for the rest of the day until dinner time, which tends to happen sometimes, especially with this guy. That's why I included it here. It's really more of a reminder for me. And if that sounds like you, welcome to the club. I even bought this fancy water bottle to remind myself, how is this $40 by the way? And it's not like I purposely do it. I usually just forget because I can get caught up with work sometimes. Water also, again, is a great appetite suppressant. And a lot of cravings that people have are usually just driven by thirst. And by the way, your brain can't tell the difference whether you're hungry or just thirsty. The problem is at the first sign of hunger, we usually just grab food right away. We're so scared of being hungry and people wonder why we have an obesity epidemic. A nice little rule here is to drink your body weight in kilos and just convert that into ounces. So if you're 70 kilos, then you're going to drink 70 ounces of water. Or if you don't want to do math, just drink half your body weight in pounds and then convert that into ounces of water. So if you're 140 pounds, drink 70 ounces of water. Obviously, this is going to be different for everyone. It depends where you live. Like if you live somewhere warm, then you might need to drink a little bit more water. It also depends how much you sweat during exercise, you know, like things like that. But you definitely don't need to be drinking gallons of water every day, especially when you have to force yourself because drinking excessive amounts of water can lead to something called hyponatremia, which can be life threatening. Number six, do something else that doesn't involve eating. We usually just eat out of habit. For example, eating breakfast because it's the most important meal of the day has been ingrained in our heads for decades now. But it's really only the most important meal of the day for breakfast food companies. But there is a grand total of zero science that shows that we actually need to eat first thing in the morning. And meal times in general are completely made up. Like who came up with the arbitrary number that we need to eat first thing in the morning? and then we need to eat at noon, and then we need to snack in between meals. Like there's no science behind that. Lions don't do that. Sharks don't do that. Our paleolithic ancestors never did that. We have really gone backwards here. My point here is we usually just eat out of habit or worse, we eat out of boredom. We use food as a form of entertainment. Like when you're studying, for example, or you're just working at your desk, or maybe you're just not doing anything and you're like, I'm bored. And then your brain goes, well, then we should eat, but that's not helpful. And usually that's not real hunger. You're not hungry. You're just bored. You're just looking for something to do. So do something else, do something else that doesn't involve shoving food into your mouth. And one of the best ways to curb hunger is to stay active throughout the day. Like don't have extended periods where you're just thinking about food. And one of the best ways to stay active is to go for a walk. Do not go for a run. There is a world of difference between the physiological effect of walking versus running. And you should check out this video if you want to know more about the science behind this. All you really need to know is that walking keeps you below your maximum aerobic heart rate, which keeps you in the fat burning zone while running triggers a cortisol response, which will then result in sugar cravings afterwards, which is what we're trying to avoid here. And if those boredom hunger cues come up, but it's not time to eat yet, then that is the perfect time to drink water, soda water, black coffee, or herbal tea. If it's at nighttime, number seven, manage your stress levels and get adequate quality sleep. This video would be incomplete if I didn't mention those two because they can have such a profound impact when it comes to controlling hunger. And I have separate videos about these topics, so make sure you check them out. But let me just give you the Coles notes here. Stress is just a part of life. For example, exercise is a type of stress, but it's an acute type of stress. 
it's only short term. But if you don't manage it properly and that stress becomes chronic, like if you're constantly stressed from work, your relationship, or money, that's when it becomes a problem because it leads to stress eating among other nasty things. And we don't really eat the healthiest stuff when we're stressed. When it comes to sleep, I have literally never met a person who made good food decisions when they're constantly sleep deprived. And lack of sleep messes up important fat loss hormones in your body like leptin, which is the hormone that signals your body that you're full. And some people consider leptin just as important as insulin when it comes to weight loss. Lack of sleep also messes up ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone. And it also affects the amygdala, which is the reward center of your brain. Your willpower is just no match if you don't manage your sleep and stress. So moving forward, you should be really asking yourself these questions. Are you really hungry or are you just thirsty? Maybe you're just bored. And when it's time to eat, you should be asking, does this food turn off hunger? And just remember this one last thing. Calories matter, but hormones count more. The next question then becomes, how are you actually supposed to eat if you want to lose weight? Because here's the thing, 80% of your body composition is determined by your diet. You can't just freestyle this part. Do you have a proven plan that you can follow? To help you with that, I want to give you a free copy of my Lean Body Blueprint. This is how I melted all the fat around my stomach without depriving myself of my favorite foods or wasting hours at the gym. It's a simple four-step process specifically designed for busy professionals and it's the exact same blueprint that I teach to all my private coaching clients and they've all gone to see some amazing results. If you want to be the next success story, then download your free copy of the Lean Body Blueprint right now. There's going to be a link somewhere at the top here or in the description box. Just click on it, type in your email, and I'll send it to you right away. All right, that's all I've got. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post a new video every week. And hey, leave a comment below if you have any questions about this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. First, a high five.